Hi, I'm here going to read some extracts from my fairly recent blog post on epictomorrows.com titled A Plethora of Tactics Does Not Preclude a Strategy, A Call for Strategic Literacy in the Metacrisis. This blog post was a response to someone called Anarchy Nouveau, who wrote on the Freedom News website a response to my original article um, of a few months back, which I wrote for Freedom News. I actually wrote it for the Freedom Journal of winter 23 to 24, but Freedom then published it online a few months later um, with some minor changes. And then Anarchy Nouveau wrote a response piece also published on the Freedom website, which I feel kind of missed the point of, of my original article, although I take on board some of their, some of their criticisms. So, yeah, I was really pleased to stimulate this debate. Um, it's quite a long blog post that I wrote, so I will just read some extracts. And if you want to read the whole thing, you can follow the link below this video. You can also follow links to find the original piece published by Freedom and the response, which I will refer to here, published by Anarchy Nouveau. Introduction. For the winter 23 to 24 issue of the paper version of the Freedom Journal UK, I wrote a piece titled Social Ecology versus the Metacrisis. On the 10th of March 2024, it was republished online by Freedom as, quote, we need a plethora of tactics, with the subtitle, considering metacrisis and the ever greater need to re-embrace Bookchin's social ecology. Someone called Anarchy Nouveau then wrote a response piece titled, We don't need a plethora of tactics, we need a climate strategy. This was republished by Freedom. Originally it was on uh, another uh, anarchist or anarchism sympathising website. So Anarchy Nouveau agreed with my article on a few points but was largely critical. I'll now skip forward a bit because I write a whole load of stuff in this blog post about my intentions and how I don't want to be misunderstood. Maybe I'll read the third reason. I've listed three reasons for writing this counter-response. Thirdly, and most importantly, I want to contribute to a movement or to currents that build strategic consensus in response to the matter crisis, because I agree with Anarchy Nouveau that, quote, the lack of revolutionary strategic thinking on ecological struggles will be both humanity and the planet's downfall if the revolutionary movement doesn't get its act together soon, end quote. In an attempt to help build consensus, I will try to write in a constructive way and avoid polemics. Um, skipping forward. Obviously, in an ideal world, I would rather not work with anyone right of centre politically, but I don't live in an ideal world. I live in the contemporary crisis-ridden one, which is no time or place to hold rigidly onto any ideology or decision-making process as the golden one that is universally superior to any other, if that means disregarding what is actually going on in the real world in bioculturally diverse localities and the varying likelihood of diverse community communities adopting our preferred golden means. Skipping forward. Humanity and the planet cannot rely on the various leftist isms and their sometimes rigid adherence to finally strike an ideological truce and then persuade the global population of 7 billion plus to a post-capitalist utopia. Moreover, a politically, economically and technologically decentralised world, the necessity for which is becoming mainstream, is certainly one where, potentially, anarcho-types of various stripes, as well as grassroots socialists, social ecologists, other so-called left libertarians and commu communitarian indigenous organisers, and please don't take my choice of labels too seriously, can advance their radically democratic visions including the advancement of some kind of post-capitalist moral economy. Moreover, many grassroots struggles around the world, including indigenous ones, are naturally eco-socialist, eco-anarchist, and have embodied their histories as such. I am no expert on activist strategy or building strategic consensus, however I do intuit and gather that trying to impose a single activist strategy, as in a hard strategy with specific steps and ways of organising, on the globe, 
even merely by suggestion, is hardly going to affect real-world events. At the worst, it is mere armchair activism, and at the very worst, it justifies charismatic and risky leaders attracting increasingly desperate followings because they have just the right anarchist, or insert ist or ism of choice, programme, which on paper indeed looks totally anti-authoritarian. The ends of a radically horizontal democracy do not justify the means of a rigidly hierarchical vanguard movement. If I identify as both a social anarchist and a social ecologist, which, amongst other things, I do, that has less effect in the world than what I actually do, especially in my local community. So, ne so now let me move on to specifically correct what I perceive to be Anarchy Nouveau's central misunderstanding about where I was coming from with my original article. The core intention of my original piece, which I gather was clear to some from their enthusiastic responses, was specifically not to lay out a comprehensive climate strategy, in brackets, or strategy for what I term the wider meta-crisis, to which climate strategy would of course be integral. My core intention was rather to, in a very gentle way, orientate or remind anarchists and radical leftists of various stripes and preferred strategies in brackets, and tactics therein, as regards the urgent need for a relocalization of culture, with a specific recommendation of Bookchin's conception of social ecology, and within that, a particular focus on dialectical naturalism. I also implied that I favour a dual power approach, which of course allows a lot of room for localised strategy formation. My ostensible focus on, quote, a plethora of tactics, end quote, which I think Anarchy Nouveau took way too literally, and the phrase was not in my original article title, as opposed to a coherent strategy in response to these times of crisis, was not because I don't see the need for a coherent strategy formation, but was because, one, Regardless of my personal preferred strategic or tactical approach, which is not, by the way, French-style ZADs or Occupy-style organising, a diversity of people will use and are using a diversity of both strategy-less tactics and coherent divergent strategies, whatever I or Anarchy Nouveau or anyone else writes on the matter. So better to start from a place of broad inclusivity of what folk are actually doing. I was, and I possibly failed, trying to catch all leftist localizers, as it were, including asp aspirants, and further encourage them to form alliances beyond the left in an ethical and social ecological context. Two, coherent and comprehensive strategy formation, whether regional, national or global, especially if we are both anti-authoritarian leftists and pragmatic climate or meta-crisis activists, cannot in fact be directed by any particular individuals, groups, isms or ists, including ourselves. Rather, we have to be alert to and encourage sound strategic thinking and bridge building and get literate in the principles of soft emergent strategy along the lines of Adrian Marie Brown, as well as the hard strategy of various experienced schools and movements of social and political action, including all the isms, and even hard military strategy. That is to say, strategic literacy and strategic consensus building, which take time, are far more important than trying to come up with a single overarching global strategy and way of organising, apparently to be imposed upon the ignorant and brokered between the various isms and ists by some magically chosen brokers. I agree with Anarchy Nouveau that the time is now, but that also means the time is now not to fuck things up and the time is now to listen to others. Consensus building must also be explored on the deeper philosophical level. 3. A plethora of tactics and actions does not preclude the emergence and development of an umbrella strategy that can fertilise, temper and harmonise those existing tactics and actions towards greater goals and broader bases of counterpower, as well as post-counterpower directly democratic authority. Obviously, it takes very skilled organisers to build bridges between existing nodes and methods of activism, resistance and dual power, and to negotiate a contested ecosystem of theories of change. Moreover, such organisers must resist the temptation to become entrenched leaders or dictators of any particular strategy or indeed underlying philosophy, regardless of their personal convictions and commitments. 
This does not mean they should not pursue more specific, e.g. social ecological, agendas in their particular localities. Such sensitive organisational work is the work that these times of crisis most urgently demand and moreover must be ethically centred, pulling together different threads into a coherent strategic whole that is not ethically diluted, although it will involve operational compromise. 4. As Anarchy Nouveau showed with some of their excellent examples, bioculturally diverse communities globally have attempted to, and continue to attempt to, resist the capitalist statist hegemony in meaningful, culturally localised ways. It would be neo-colonialist to view these struggles merely as practices towards or deviations from an intellectualised, ideal, global, social or political movement. Such a philosophical view can only be valid if we simultaneously honour the strategic and cultural diversity that goes into, and will always go into, societal change. Thus, Anarchy Nouveau's assumptions of my lack of strategic literacy and predilection towards directionless Occupy-style organising don't hold. So why didn't I offer such a sophisticated analysis the first time round? And then I go into why. I don't need to read that here. You can look at the article. Then the next section is Anarchy Nouveau and New Anarchism. Maybe I'll just read the beginning of that. In the interests of building strategic consensus, let me now turn to the points on which I generally or substantially agree with Anarchy Nouveau, with some qualifications. I potentially agree with more than I disagree with, and if new anarchy or new anarchism should be a thing, it should be an anarchism which embraces consensus building, but also diversity and respectful dissent. It should be an expansive anarchism. Okay. I can agree with them that so-called specific or especifismo-based organising amongst anarchists and indeed social ecologists can be a very valid and pragmatic approach and make a lot of sense. There is nothing in my original article to oppose this. And the inclusion of especifismo on the Institute for Social Ecology website, the ISE which Bookchin co-founded, renders somewhat irrelevant Anarchy Nouveau's characterization of Bookchin's analysis of the Spanish anarchists. So yeah, Anarchy Nouveau, I feel, really misrepresents Murray Bookchin and social ecology, although they admit um, some fertile ground for change in, in the theory and practice of social ecology. So I kind of go into some specifics of why I think they've got Bookchin wrong and social ecology a bit wrong. Um, but you know it's some good debate so maybe you might be interested in reading both of our articles maybe not let me now quote Anarchy Nouveau in full in one of their paragraphs where we probably share the greatest agreement quote Bookchin was definitely onto something however in exploring the municipal community assembly as an organizational form th uh, through which to construct a relocalization and deindustrialization of the economy in the process of degrowth Given that we need a rapid transition to a simplified economy based on local self-sufficiency, if we are to end our dependency on fossil fuels and capitalist monocultures, local assemblies create the basis for communities to meet face-to-face -to, -face to address the social and ecological issues which affect them. End quote. So I feel I really, I really get the spirit of this and agree with the spirit of this, but I, I take issue with... Um, Anarchy Nouveau's simplification of Bookchin's uh, ideas. So I write, I wholeheartedly agree with the spirit of the passage above and would only add a couple of qualifications. Firstly, Bookchin did not advocate deindustrialization so much as reindustrialization through a qualitative dianat based, that's dialectical naturalism based, ecological technology in italics, not a merely quantitative deindustrialization. Of course, an ecological reindustrialization does indeed imply a significant level of deindustrialization and degrowth to the extent that an ecological technology in society would integrate a moral economy based on communal as opposed to private property and would not be based on mindless consumption or the pursuit of economic growth. Nevertheless, note that freedom from toil is also a theme in social ecology, partly as a reaction against the Marxist fetishization of work. 
It is argued that an ecological technology would entail a degree of sophisticated design and automation, liberating people to engage in both deliberative local democracy and studied artisanship. Anarchy Nouveau fails to mention these aspects in their passage above or in their wider article. I then give another criticism of Anarchy Nouveau's uh, conception of Bookchin and social ecology. Um, there's too much to go into here, really. Um, I then go into some depth, into some points on which I disagree uh, with Anarchy Nouveau. I'll give some examples. Aside from the broad areas of overlap and agreement between myself and Anarchy Nouveau, I feel I should correct them on a couple of factual errors and explain a key difference in terminology between our articles, with what I hope is a useful suggestion for the activist reader. I will deal with the errors fairly briefly, as I do not want to dwell on division. The first point follows on from the discussion above. The first error is that Bookchin didn't disidentify with anarchism either as frivolously or as completely as Anarchy Nouveau suggested in their article. I understand from one of Bookchin's close friends, who was also his student, that he agonised over the decision to formally reject the label of anarchist. That doesn't mean I completely agree with his decision. Apart from his issue with so-called individualist or lifestyle anarchism versus social anarchism, where he thought the former was gaining too much weight in comparison with the latter, from around the 1980s onwards, Bookchin also found seriously problematic anarchism's historical attempts to deal with power. I then go on. You can read the article for this. As I have written above, whether or not communalism or so-called consensus decision-making are adopted on the ground in every case does not have to be the subject of division between social ecologists and anarchists. Divergences in theory between these positions are less important than the opportunity of working together in an always messily human localised practice. So yeah, I'm there debating the classic or, or describing the classic... Um, so-called tension between consensus decision-making and uh, voting, democratic voting, majority rule, democracy, direct democracy. In my view, social ecology is a kind of eco-anarchism, thus Bookchin's so-called split from anarchism has been overemphasized. In the 2005 preface to, AK, to the AK Press edition of The Ecology of Freedom, which both Bookchin and others considered to be his keystone work, he did not even mention his break from anarchism. In respect to anarchism, he noted only that Kropotkin had been a huge influence on him. In the 1991 introduction, included in the 2005 edition, he wrote... All of my writings are meant to give a coherent view of the social sources of our ecological crisis and to offer an eco-anarchist project to structure society along rational lines. I then uh, give quite a long um, reasoning as to why I think we should focus on the term metacrisis as opposed to climate crisis. Um, you can read the article below for that, I think. And then I end with or nearly, and I, I end this section with, thus we don't need merely a climate strategy, as Anarchy Nouveau suggested, so much as a strongly climate-centred meta-strategy, meta which addresses the social ecological lack at the root of all modern crises. This is my suggestion to the reader activist. I then give a summary. Uh, the summary is titled, Building Strategic Literacy and Consensus in the Meta-Crisis. I will, I will read out the summary in another video and also republish it as a strategy bulletin. Uh, that will come soon. And I hope you're intrigued to read the whole of this article. If not, never mind. Uh, but if you are, please share this video and share the article below it and so on and so on. Thank you very much.